blessings and thanks to this mayor, man I've known for a number of years. I remember uh, pulling together and helping and aiding on his first tenure. And I often called him not just the mayor of the city of Anderson, but the mayor of Anderson County. Thank you for the invitation that you've given unto us. It's always good to come home to our great sister who've come to talk about her dad. So many memories came in that brief moment. So we thank you for your travel from Augusta to be here to share with the many of us who gather in this place. Now, I have been given the task of sharing about Chad. Let me make sure that you understand that I don't think you want to hear me. You're ready to look at something much larger. So I'm standing in the middle of a situation that's going to hinder you from getting all that you've come to get today. So be very brief and quite to the point as we share together just a little bit about Chad himself. Nineteen eighty five. It all began when I arrived at the Welfare Baptist Church over in Belton. I was welcomed by hundreds of adults and embraced by nearly one hundred young children. I had an opportunity to look, to see, and to enjoy, to observe uh, this congregation. And I noticed the young people, being a child at that time myself. I looked at what was going on with the young people. And one thing that I noticed that, one thing that I noticed that on first Sunday, a group of young people, some just not even in public school, eight, nine, ten years in addition, would come up every first Sunday to sing and to inspire us and to bring about an understanding of why we were worshiping this day. On those first Sundays of the month, as the children choir would sing, one particular Sunday, I decided to not sit in the pulpit, but to come out so I could see them face to face. And on the back row of the choir was a particular child who later identified himself as Chadwick Aaron Bozeman. We called him Chad the youngest of three sons born to Ms. Leroy and Ms. Carolyn Bozeman. The couple had in, embraced their faith, the faith of their ancestors, and it was moving within them. And that same faith was passed on to those boys. I could hear it. I could almost see it as if Chad, as he sang and went along with a particular choir, something unique came forth. That it presented a movement that would last a lifetime. I can hear, I love Jesus better than ice cream. And ice cream is better than good. Jesus loves me better than ice cream. I always knew he would. Even when I disobey him and don't do all the things that I should, I love Jesus better than ice cream. And ice cream is better, better than good. Chad's uniqueness was to always do the best he could 
in order to accomplish whatever he set out to do. He was always active in the church, especially in the youth department, participating in skits, singing with the young adult choir, participating in local and state oratorial contests. He seems to have been the best when he was performing in front of others. A different Chad comes up when he stood before an audience. Chad loved his high school. He loved speech and debate. From the forensic program in the high school, he became a leader in the South Carolina Baptist Congress of Christian Education. And at the church, he even wrote a play, maybe the first one that I knew of, that helped local youth express their feelings by coping with the tragic death of one of their peers. He penned it, he pulled it together orchestrated it, and presented it at the Welfare Church. As a 15-year-old teenager, he also wrote and presented his first statewide play. We were hosting in, in, in Anderson County, we were hosting the Baptist Educational Congress. And here he came with the idea Pastor, can I present the play? And I said, well, yes. And so we moved around the schedule so that he would have an opportunity to present a play that tears began to fall from those who observed. And many came to me and were shocked to see such a young man to have so much talent and able to use it in such a way. After graduating and moving to Washington, D.C. to attend Howard University, Chad never forgot his church. They never forgot his pastor. Every time he would come, he would find some way to steal away and spend some time to talk. And whatever was on his mind came out, and we shared. And we knew where he was going in, in the sense that he wanted to be the best that he could be under any situation, no matter what it is. And after graduating, after graduating from Howard University, his sister cousin, our sister basically, became our connector. She made sure there was no gap between us and Chad. She detailed everything that was going to happen. And she brought it to me personally and to the church in general. She had a way of remembering everything about Chad. She detailed every television program that he was going to be on. Reminded us of the station and of the time, the date, the very hour that we ought to be there to make sure that we do not miss Chad. Dion always made sure that whatever show he was going to appear on, we knew it and we understood it. I called her the best cheerleader any, any actor ought to have. When he started performing in the movies, we encouraged our church family to be there. And there was always an excitement in the air because we just wanted to see Chad in the movie. At the end of each movie, we would ask the family about the next movie, and about the next movie, and about the next movie. Wasn't it exciting when he began to portray real life historical persons that many of us had learned about over the years? that he brought those persons to life. Jackie Robinson, 42. James Brown, as we just heard, and get on up. Thurgood Marshall, in Marshall. And for his portrayal as a superhero in Black Panther, Anderson had gone wild as we were boasting about a young man who had come our way. Who 
would have thought is a rising star. That little boy in the rural area of Anderson County who was the hope and the dream of so many would leave us so fast. According to those who work in the movie industry, our Chad, our young lad, accomplished enough for three careers in all of his two brief of years. 43, a year lifespan. We have come here this evening with heavy hearts because death has invaded our ranks. Death has moved into our personal space. I snatched one that we just knew many, many, many more years would have come and removed them from our presence. Death is a hard word. Death has invaded our personal space death. We hate it. Death. We hate it. But life, we love it. Death, we run from it. But life, we embrace it. So many of us here this evening would give almost anything we could just for another day of living. Death, we fear it. Just think, just think for a few moments. Only a few days ago, we like many others learned that Chad knew that his life was fading away. And the strangest thing about it, there was no sign from him that life was almost over. We heard it and many of us were in tears. But yet we learned that Chad knew that his life was fading. And that for four years, he processed the idea of death and dying. Seemingly doing it all by himself in a right relationship with his God. God gave him four years, four years to gain some sense of peace and acceptance that life would soon be over. He learned that life exists only for a season, and he was not willing to give up until that season had come to an end. Life. When I look at Chad, when he left, he did not leave just a few television shows, but he left national and international movies. He also left memories. And the other day I was reading and looking and, and trying to get in contact with his spirit and I read across a few of his quotes. And he left those quotes to enable us who will be left behind after he's gone to face this world until our time shall come. He said, I think, I think you realize how much you need to have people that love you. But it's not much about them loving you. It's about you needing to love people. He said, your struggles along the way are only meant to shape you for your promise. He said, when I stand before my God at the end of my life, I would hope that I would have not a single bit of talent left and could look him face to face and say, God, 
I used everything you gave me. William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare said it this way. The whole world is nothing but a stage. And each one of us are playing a part. One day the curtain will fall. And if you've played the part well, you'll be promoted to a higher stage. He sang, I love Jesus better than ice cream. And ice cream is better than good. Jesus loves me better than ice cream. I always knew he would. Even when I disobeyed him and don't do all the things that I should, I love Jesus better than ice cream. And ice cream is better than good. Let us pray as we say good night to Chad and all that he meant to each one of us. Our God, you've said that there is a season and a time for everything in this world. Today you have granted us a chance to celebrate the life and the legacy of Chadwick Aaron Bozeman. Collectively, we come to thank you for allowing him to come this way, to be born here in Anderson County, to grow up and to bring forth the understanding of who you are and leave and conquer the whole world. Thank you for his spirit of meekness and thank you for his love. Even though we are finding it difficult, oh God, to accept what has happened, we know that everything works out for the good. Please give us peace that surpasses all understanding. Give us strength to remember the wonderful moments that we shared with with Chad. Request special blessings upon his parents, his brothers, and his extended family members. Most importantly, we just thank you. Thank you, God. You've given us through him the strength to run on. To one day to stand what Chad now stands. In the name of him who has given us eternal life, Jesus the Christ. Amen.